everybody. Welcome to another episode of Creatives Ignite. Used to be Design Recharge at some point. I'll stop saying that. Um, but for now, just, you know, this is episode 409. I was wrong on my numbers, uh, Joanna, so I'm sorry. I had 410 down, but it's really 409. And I'm excited to have Joanna Paula Honeyman. And I hopefully got it as good as I can. You got it right. You got it right. Oh, <laughs> Joanna. I've known Joanna for... I don't know, maybe two years. Yeah, a couple years, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the time that I've known her, so she's a designer, trained as a designer, uh, has her own business, um, amazing entrepreneur, strategist, um, did brand strategy, pivoted again. All this time, she's doing some art on the side. And then she's like, throws everything out she's like I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the art and I think this is so ballsy ballsy is an okay word my mom she's okay with that word um so but it is I think so many of us want that we want uh to be that bold and I when I was looking at your process and we've had lots of conversations I love you you're just awesome and and just your story going from like, I didn't know how to draw. I went to art school. I didn't, I didn't take these kinds of classes or I couldn't draw. And when you see her drawings, people, you're going to be like, what? She couldn't draw. It looks like she came out of the womb drawing. It's so good. So amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, I am excited to show. So I'm going to control the screen today, but Joanna, so in that, I'm sure I missed out lots of things, but I think lots of people want to know, or I want to know, did you start out, were you always doing art, and you were, you think you couldn't draw, or did you go to school? Can you give us kind of like the background, and then I'll dig into some other questions? Yeah, no, I was always like um, an artsy kid, you know, I, I always drew when I was a little kid, and by the time I was in high school, I was I wanted to go into art, but I didn't know. I honestly didn't think you could make a living with art, you know. So I that's when I decided. I think right after high school, I decided I would go into graphic design, and um, that was I thought the only path to that an artist, anyone that was creative, could go to. So that's how I landed in design. Um, and then, so I went to school for design and then I started working at, um, gosh, so long ago, I started working at it, at a, like a, um, a small agency. And then I started, I, you know, I bounced around in different agencies. And then finally I went, to, to a corporate job. And then after that, I decided, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to work for anybody. I want to start my own business. So that's when I decided I would um, start my own agency and I was running it for 10 years. Yeah, that's basically. So you know, how many years did you work for somebody else? And then, cause 10 years working for yourself. I worked about, I would say another 10 years. So it's probably been like 20 years really. Yeah. Or maybe right. longer. Okay. I don't want to date myself too much. We're not, we're not, we're not math people here. So we're, yeah, we'll just let's, let's not do some math. Let's not do the math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So being an artsy kid, does that mean that you could draw really well as a kid? Or no, did you take art classes as a no, kid? No, you know what? I mean, I I could draw okay. You know, I was like one of those kids that was just doodling and, and drawing here and there, but I wasn't like I never took, I don't think they, they even offered drawing classes. I don't even think I took like um drawing classes in high school. I think the closest that I got to was like arts and crafts in high school. And I took a a drafting class. That's what I remember taking. But um, as far as drawing, drawing for like upping my skills, I never even considered that. I never even thought about doing it really. I thought it was something that you were born with, quite frankly. You know, total, I already had that fixed mindset when I was a kid. You know, and I think it was from hearing people say, like, some people are born talented, you know, (laughs) some people are not. Like, I really didn't know that you could um, keep practicing and get better. I really didn't have that mentality. Did you play any instruments? I didn't, but 
these are my husbands. Is that what you're asking? Right. But no, no, because I, I think so many, like as a musician, right? We think about, it's not like, hey, I bought, I bought a piano. I'm going to have a concert this Sunday. Oh, can you play? Well, I bought a piano. You know, like it doesn't come with. So we think about it with music that we're going to have to practice and get better. I don't know. I don't really think I, I think that I expect. Oh, I have these tools. I should know how to use them. I've watched a few <laughs> YouTube videos on this gelatos or, you know, watercolor or whatever. I'll just be able to. But it's so much about the feel and the hand and getting your hand doing the right thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Right. So my mom and dad um, would uh, they my mom took me out and my dad really had anything to do with it. I'm sure maybe if my dad's there, he'd be like, I was there anyway. But they I had extra after school art classes in like my from my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. And they were great. Like, I'm very glad that lady taught me about sight sight measuring. Right. Like the that yeah, me yeah, and yeah. you have. And that really was like a game changer. And you said, you were like, oh, this is a game changer. So do you want to tell them? Do you want me to, and whenever you want me to bring something up, tell me and then I'll pull it up so that we can get to it. But like, uh, I think that was kind of a game changer for you in feel, feeling like you figured out how to draw. Yeah. I mean, First, I don't know. I mean, so all this time that I'm a designer, all this time that I'm doing brand strategy, I was, you know, drawing, I was taking our, um, painting classes, not drawing classes, painting classes. I decided like about five years ago, or I don't remember when it was because we're not doing math, right? Um, that I wanted to do, I wanted to paint. So I was, I was always spending time at the museums with my husband. I was always looking at watching like art programs or going to art shows. And I decided one day I want to paint. I really want to paint. So anytime that I had off, like any moments that I had free, that's what I was doing with my time. But I went straight into painting thinking. Because, because that, why? Yeah. Because I thought I don't need to draw to paint. Let's be real. I can just get messy with the paint. I mean, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get messy with the paint and like, just have it on, like everywhere. Um, and I, I don't know why I just thought I could bypass drawing. I don't know why I thought that. So I started, I kind of had the wrong mindset and thinking all this design stuff that I've been doing should carry me now into like doing some painting, right? I just, I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> I really thought, I have no idea why I had that mentality. So I think that that caused a lot of frustration for me because when I went into painting, it's a whole new beast, right? It's a whole like, it's a, the learning curve is really high. So um, I decided, you know, I, I, I spent a lot of time being frustrated trying to learn things. And then it wasn't until I got into a, I decided to take a workshop with a master painter. Cause by this time I had already um, figured out some stuff with the paint. I had already started doing some stuff that I kind of liked. Um, and I took this workshop and the, the, the painter was really honest with me. And she said, you know what? you can paint pretty good. She's like, you can, except for doesn't really look like the person that you're painting. You know, if, if you go back and take some drawing classes, you know, you can really up your painting, you know? And I thought, damn, like that's the, that's like, I didn't want to hear that. Cause I thought, no, I just want, I didn't want to go to the mechanical part of it. I don't want to do that. I just wanted to get, cause I felt like the pencil was almost a little too precise you know, and I wanted it, I just wanted to get loose. So I think I was starting, I was trying to run before I could actually walk, you know? So then by the time I started, I, I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to listen to her. This is amazing. By the way, if she's telling me to do that, then I'm just going to have to suck it up and I'm going to have to go to drawing class, you know? And so I went to class. I, I signed up for um, classical, I think classical drawing. And I mean, we started with the whole, like, let's draw, let's look at the sphere. And I was like, I already know the sphere. Like, I already know that. Why do I need to go back to doing the sphere, you know? But I moved so fast because once I, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm ready to fail at anything I do here. It doesn't matter. I'm just, it doesn't matter. I'm here to learn as much as I possibly can. And so 
I just went in going, it doesn't matter if I'm do good or not. I'm just going to try to learn if it takes me years and it'll take me years, but I'm going to just keep going at it. And I think that was when things started to click. Cause then I gave myself the patience and the, the time. Cause there wasn't, there was really no time limit, right? Drawing and, and art is like a lifetime um, of learning. So I, I gave myself a little bit of grace and a little bit of patience and I was able to do it. I mean, I got to a point where I was drawing some pretty decent stuff, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. So I love, <laughs> I love that you just took the advice instead of saying, and I think, you know, sometimes we do think it's just this, you'll be drawing with this, but I pretty sure you did with charcoal and those are bigger things, yeah. bigger moves. And that's different. And if you weren't familiar with it, it, it really does help to kind of get out of your head in that tiny detail. So mm -hmm. I have a ton of questions, but I want you to describe your art and drawing skills pre 2015. So this is before the master drawing lady. This is really before you started painting or drawing so that people can kind of get an idea. Yeah. I mean, I could look at something and draw kind of like the, the shape, you know, and I got by whenever I had um, uh, projects that required drawing, I could get by and I could do them. And with enough, you know, erasing, I could get by. I think on a, on a scale at one to 10, I think we did that last time, right? When we were asked, when you were asking me this question, what was it? I think I, I said I was maybe a four or a five or something like that. As far as drawing, I, I could do some things, but definitely couldn't. I mean, definitely not out of memory. So that's what my, my skills. So, were. so you knew, and, and then you started taking these painting classes just on the side after work on the weekends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime that I had free, I, that's when I decided I was going to take classes. I was going to spend my time doing that. And then I was like, I'm actually liking this way better than what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So, so that was about 2015. You started taking these classes, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was okay. Nice. So, and Taylor said, uh, she said some lady was like, trying to get into illustration by buying a Wacom tablet. Oh my goodness. How many times they're like, Oh, what kind of brush are you using, Joanna? All we really need is the brush or the yeah. pin, right. For lettering people. I know that used to. Or the right setup. <laughs> right. Yeah. If I just had that camera shooting down, I'll be able to draw, but it really is that practice over and over and over. Right. I just think it, it is fun. And we do, I do it too. I have so many tools, right? So many, so many tools in my library cabinet. Um, and it's not about that. It's about me spending time with them. So mm -hmm. I, I, in 2000, when did you do the little, you, you were taking, you're an amazing photographer. Just say that if you follow, I'll put up, uh, Joanna's Instagram, a ton of amazing photography and it's not her camera. It's not her phone. It's her eye that she sees it and she can just see, uh, me and our other friend, Jody, were talking about this, I think yesterday that you just have this knack for, um, Jody was like, everywhere she goes is beautiful. And I'm like, I think it's more Joanna, you know, like Joanna can see and pull out those beautiful things, which I think is really cool. So something else. So you had all these photos um, on your phone, right? Yeah. So I was, like I said, I was, I started painting before I started drawing. Right. So that's how I taught myself how to paint. I took classes here and there, but it just wasn't sticking with me. So I thought I heard, I heard somebody say one time, I think on Instagram, they were doing like a 30 day challenge, you know, do a painting a day and like time yourself. So my designer brain, like a lot of designers, we want to have everything designed perfectly. And we want like the, the, you know, we want the composition already to be fine. And that was really something that was tripping me up. I was thinking too much about what should I paint? You know, what now, what am I going to do? Um, so yeah, I take a lot of photos every time I'm out with my husband, every time I'm walking anywhere I go, I take photos because I believe you can take a beautiful photo of just about anything. If you look at it right. And I think it designers, um, can vouch for that, but, um, yeah, I decided one day, you know what, instead of thinking about this, I'm going to go through my photo stream and I'm just going to paint what I see, what is on my, my photo stream, easy breezy, right? Not don't have to think about it. And that way 
I'll just try to get the likeness of the image that's there. And the composition was pretty much, eh, it was pretty good, you know, and, and some weren't, but whatever. And I gave myself uh, a challenge of doing one a day. Um, and sometimes I try to, to keep it with, I started off by trying to keep it by uh, under 30 minutes, but then it, some of them went like an hour. And then the most intricate ones were like a couple of hours. But I really just, what I wanted to do was get out of my, my headspace. And I wanted just to do, just to paint. You know, I didn't want to overthink. And a lot of designers, we spend a lot of time overthinking, right? And we're so pixel perfect. Everything has to be just right. And I really wanted to get out of that. So that was a really good challenge for me um, when I did those. And, and it really showed me the things I could do once I stopped being in my head. Once mm -hmm. I stopped overthinking. It was a right, real... So can I show some of those? Yeah, sure. So is this all 30 of them? This isn't all 30 of no, them, right? No, this is... I picked the ones that I like the best. Okay. Um, but yeah, these are some of the, that series. So this is acrylic? No, this is oil. So this is oil. So working within 30 minutes with oil is huge, uh, I think, just because oil takes different things. Um, mm. And then, uh, and Hannah saying, uh, beautiful. I love the colors and the composition. Maura says, I love a 30-day challenge. It seems to be my limit. She said, beautiful. So were these all things you took photos of, or these were things that were just in your stream? Okay. No, so I'm just going to, I took photos of, yeah. So I'm just going to, without knowing I was going to do it for the 30, 30 day challenge, but right, way. right, right. So this took a little bit you, longer. Some of them took a little bit longer. I'm not going to lie. That wasn't a, under, that wasn't a half an hour. I think this was more like a couple of hours. I kept going over it. You can kind of see that in that. <laughs> There's some things in, in how you're doing your colors, which I just absolutely love. And Van says, beautiful, love it. Food images are a fave. But you have like a Tibor Kalman kind of, um, do you know who that is? He paints a whole bunch of cakes. Do you know yeah, who that yeah, is? no, I do. And I, I really love his stuff. I, he just recently passed, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh, Wayne. Yeah. I don't Wayne Tibor. Yeah. Wayne Tebow. Yeah, that's it. Tibor Kalman is somebody else. That's cool. He's a photographer. Anyway. Right? I knew anyway. what you were talking about, though. <laughs> but I knew. Yes. Thank goodness. Because I said, the um, yeah. So the one with the, I love the glasses. I love the knife and the fork. I love this blue. And then, so then, you know, it looks like you're at a restaurant maybe because the little salt pepper shakers. Yeah, that was in, um, I, I love to spend time in Palm Springs. And that was in Palm Springs, in a hotel in Palm Springs. And Anna says she's on a 30 of a 31 day painting challenge oh, and it's awesome. changing her life. And right. most of hers are uh, under an hour, but she's doing it in acrylics. Oh, that's amazing. So, so I, you know, just as, as you're like the, was this there and you, or did you ever make up backgrounds? Um, I made up a couple of backgrounds. This is not one of them. This is an actual, um, uh, photo that I took in Palm Springs again. Uh, oh, I think cool. there's a few, yeah, there's a few, I think down below that are, I made up the background. Like I made up this background, right? Cause I wasn't, I didn't have a yellow background. So I made that, that one up. Man, these are amazing donuts. Thank you. This is when I started to, this one I started to already um, curate, you know, I started to kind of design it. I put like paper in the back that had this pattern and I liked the way the sun was hitting it. So this is when it started to get a little bit more thoughtful. <laughs> Debbie says these paintings are making her salivate. Um, Anna <laughs> says this one's her favorite. So the light, the color, subject matter, astounding, Pridge says. So I love it. So in, um, and I can't, Van said, I feel inspired to look at my photos and draw. So I, again, I, I love anything that we are um, just I think design recharge or creatives ignite, whatever I'm calling it this week. I think it's all about hope. So I, I love, I love this. Okay. So you have such a great, um, it's, they're, they're very colorful. They're very lively. They look real, but there also is that illustrative. It's not photographic. You can tell that there's something else in there. Thank you. you because power. I was trying not to do photographic. <laughs> right. Right. Because it so there, but there's very much life and these do look like really good avocados. They don't look yucky, you know, 
Jana says she loves the detail in the avocados with the slight hint of brown. Absolutely. I can hear my daughter refusing to eat it because of that very slight tint. <laughs> I, I, I just love that you made it your own in this. Um, so when you're drawing from life, which is what you've learned now after this. So going from a photo as opposed to doing life, this is can be very different, right? Yes. Yeah. Was that a, a big challenge in? It is. And it continues to be a challenge. I think it always will be a challenge for me. Um, and quite frankly, we don't have access to live people all the time. So that is a challenge in itself. So, but you know what? I, I believe in working with what you've got. I'm not going to be a stickler of like, I have to paint from life versus I can paint from, you know, photos or whatever. I think I think if your design, number one, if your design is good and technical skills is second, I believe, I think if you have a good design, no matter what it is, I think you can pull it off. Yeah. yeah. These are just beautiful. Color-wise, you just are fantastic in the color. I love this pink up here, this blue that I I just love that. I love Thank that. You. Love the see-throughness of her, her whatever that cover up thing cover up the way right like that's a different techniques it's yeah. it's I it wasn't that you were just drawing food or the things that were mm -hmm. um still I mean my goodness water is hard and you're doing it in oil yeah you know I was with these I was really trying to challenge myself I like I said I didn't want to um overthink. And so whatever came up on the photo stream, I was like, I'm going to have to paint that one, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable painting people. So I think you can kind of maybe see that here. I can see it, but um, yeah, I wanted it uh, to challenge myself. So that's the best way but, to learn is to challenge yourself. But this one, I, I would think this one is later on because your people are getting better, like your hand uh, with the donuts. Mm -hmm. I think there's a difference in and we are going to talk about this later because I think some of this is just a mindset thing where like, this isn't what a hand looks like, or this isn't what a donut looks like, or this isn't a whatever. But this lady is freaking fantastic. I mean, it may not exactly look like what she looked like, but I love the colors. I love the brush strokes. I love it. It does feel like you've developed something from some of those other studies. Do you remember what, I mean, was this towards the end? Do you remember? This was towards the end of the studies. It was towards like, I think I did 40, about 45 in the end. Um, and I think this was one towards the end. Yeah. And I, again, I, now I see all my mistakes, <laughs> but anyway, these were studies, so it's okay. Gotta let it go. <laughs> me, me and Paul don't see any mistakes here. Good. Right? I'm so <laughs> glad. <laughs> Uh, Amy, Amy Lyon says, for reals, this is really amazing. So Thank again, uh, I do see this connection to you have bright colors, that cobalt kind of blue shows mm -hmm. up, but then you also really like playing with like um, complementary colors on the color wheel. So then I think this is the one that I was like, wow, this was in your photo stream. That was the one I was like, you took yeah. this photo? But yeah. This was a, yeah. um, this was in at Otis College of Design. They were having their um, senior show. The, the fashion designers were having their, their senior show. And I took a, a snapshot of it. And then afterwards, I looked at it and was like, wow, oh, that would be so cool. Actually, I think I'd want to develop this even further um, into a bigger painting somehow. Cool. Yeah. And then the, uh, the pulp, the reflection on the bowl, like there's just, Pulp is hard, right? Pulp is, yeah, the I mean, reflections. Yeah. yeah, I think when you, you know, what this is one thing we can get nerdy about later. But um, one thing that I that I learned um, after drawing and after all these classes was not to look at, not to let's see. How do I say this? Not to draw what you think you see. Mm -hmm. it, you know, to draw the shapes. You know, so once you start looking at shapes, that really changes your your mindset. Instead of thinking I'm drawing an orange, you're thinking I'm drawing a shape of an orange here. I'm drawing this little bit that, you know, once you start doing that, I think you can really free yourself. 
It's yeah, not always see, easy though. It's I forget sometimes. I forget. Well, you stop seeing it as this is a lip, but really it's just, oh, it's just a line. And then there's a triangle here and there's a circle here or whatever. Right. right. You, and, and I think that's where I love about your color is that, that in that lady's hair, you put like teal blue and we do see that, but that is your interpretation on it. It is there. There is blue in there. I just, that's, I just love this. Okay. So then, oh, hey, Amy Lynn's here too. Another California girl. Yay. <laughs> so, so then again, we get the blue. We see lots of colors. So I see this kind of in the one of your mom that we're going to see in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are all, they, they were fun. They were really fun to do reflections this was, yeah this was one of my favorites this one I staged and I took a photo of oh yeah looks so. like mirror shoes yeah they pretty much are <laughs> this is like drawing somebody else right drawing of uh, somebody else's drawing so this is where when yeah. we know that it's a flower we know but it's going back in perspective we can't really see the whole flower so you have to draw just what you see or right. something this can, this can be um hard and Jeremy no problem buddy we're just glad you're here um and then this tea kettle again so there's some there's some things that come up color there's some things about color I see reflection you are em embracing reflection and obviously food and then there's some uh, anyway so so this is like stage one you did this in 2015 I think it was 20 no 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 this was um 20 this was more recent. I think it was 2019 or yeah, I think it was 2019. Okay. So, so then you, you're, you took, you started taking a, uh, the painting class and then you went to this drawing. And so we're going to go into the site sizing because this sure. for me is something I learned as a kid. I mean, a, a junior in high school, and this was really helpful to me. Um, and if any, just anybody in the chat, can you say, if you know, these are all did I mean analog? These are all with oils and a brush. Jo Joanna Joanna did not want to be on the computer. I think she wanted to get away from some of this, right? Yeah, um, that's exactly so, why I pivoted to that. I overworked on the computer. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring up the site sizing, and I don't. Uh, I think I can remember where you started. So I started, um, uh, I can pull, I can show you. I started with the most basic drawing. So if you scroll up, I think it was, so yeah, like the one right above it, the one right above it. That was one of the first ones that I did. And that was not sight sizing, but that was basically copying from another um, drawing. This is one of the most um, like used images when you're starting to learn how to draw. And that was, that was shading and stuff like that. Again, I already had some principles behind me. So it's not like I came in going, you know, I, this is the first time I'm touching a pencil, but um, it really helped for me to start seeing, you know, the nose area, for example, I'm pointing like, like you can see me pointing, but the nose area and like the mouth and, and the light, the, the highlight above the lips, like all those yeah. things I started to notice just by looking at somebody else's photograph. And, you know, um, uh, I mean, drawing, it's really good to back engineer things. Reverse engineering is, is a really great way to learn, to teach yourself. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was, so that was the, one of the first ones that I did and yeah, that one. So this is kind of, this is the same, um, idea, you know, you take a photograph on your left and then you, you, you draw it on the right, um, using, using measurements and stuff like that. So that was the second one that I did or the third one. I think Was that site sizing? Were you doing like taking, and, and this is kind of how it, or this is how I was taught. And that lady mom who you had me go to, she was awesome. She, her personality wasn't that great, but she was pretty dry, but she did teach me this. And I still think about this, but so when we're drawing something and it's in front of us, whether mm -hmm. it's a physical three-dimensional thing or like a drawing like this you can measure the hand from here to here like that elbow and that's a measurement and then you could say okay well this over here is from here to here then this is another hand size and then another hand size and then oh probably oh three quarters it's a, but another hand size and then you just break it down so that your proportions are correct right yeah pretty much 
Pretty much with this, with this um, having the drawing on left and your drawing on the right, you could take the ruler and like measure, this is the top of the head. This is where the shoulder goes. This is where this goes, you know, and, and that, so this is a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say easier. It's just, it's not as hard as when you get into the actual sight sizing, like from a distance. Um, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So when you do it from a bust, right, that's how I learned. I think I started with a, a drawing, but I did, she never let me use a ruler. But yeah. you <laughs> like take, I say I'm going to draw this thing behind me. I'm going to, well, I'll show you later when, right? But you put yes. your finger and you're like, the first two, those two things are those two drawers, right? Mm -hmm. Are this far down the pencil. So you have the, or your charcoal or whatever it was, pa a paintbrush, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You would say, okay, it was two. So that means how many of those? And then I would count on my page. I, I drew it and then I would, I would measure that. And then I would go down and I would be able to I'm probably butchering it. Never mind. <laughs> it's hard to explain. To be quite honest, it's hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, have to we need be to there. have like a video of uh, yeah. somebody doing that. Probably yeah. is, is would be better. Okay, so so then, and this is your final, right? That was the final after you shade and add the white and stuff like that. Okay, and then this one I think was the first one. Yeah, that that's I, the that's the first sight sizing one that I did. So you step back. And you, you constantly stand on the same position and then you measure and then you go into the drawing and you start using rulers to, to identify where the shape is going to go. So you work around the negative space, I, I would say, first, and then you start plugging in the information inside. So it's like you make it's like um, what is that word? I think it's like um, faceted. It's almost like a faceted drawing. You know, you make mm -hmm. you make a, a shape on the outside and then you start going inside and start seeing the triangles, the whatever inside. And then that's when you can go further and start drawing. I know this is getting super geeky. Sorry. If <laughs> I think, I think everybody's with us. Okay, uh, good. I know that there's a lot of Hannah, artists here. Yeah. Hannah yeah. says she loves the movement in the beard. The thing is, is I saw this, you can go back to uh, Joanna's Instagram and you can see she'll have some of these and I'll, I'll put this up in just a second. Mm -hmm but you can see the process where it starts as just this flat kind of like a uh, line drawing of, of just maybe, and you can tell the proportions maybe aren't exact or, or, and so much comes in when you are shading for me, for her to say, I can't draw. And then she was able to learn this in a matter of, I don't know, six months. What do you think? How many? Yeah, it was probably, it was definitely a few months. It wasn't that, that long. Um, right. And, and I want to say it's patience, you know, just patience. <laughs> Lots yeah, and, and we'll, we'll see this with the other, cause you, you were drawing this woman in this blue dress. Um, I mean, and here's, here's another, right. That's another sight sizing as well. Yep. And then that's the final. Yeah, that's one of the finals. And these are charcoal. And then you were doing something really cool with charcoal, which was like painting with it, right? Yeah, these are, those are mo my most recent ones, the, the charcoal okay. that you'll see. So, so you took it to a different place because you started brushing with it, right? Right. And, and really, you can see that before she does any of the shading at all, she does this kind of line drawing. And then it continues to get just improved 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 and to me I was just like blown away I mean this one was like what because this looks real like you could just walk up to it and touch it right like to me thank you yeah. Van says patience what's that well I'd have a whole <laughs> nother show just on patience I so, know oh my gosh <laughs> okay so at this time when you're doing these are you still working as a brand strategist um, when was it? Yes. Yes. I'm still working as a okay. brand strategist during this. Yeah. This, I was okay, taking so these at, at, um, at an atelier here in Los Angeles called Klein Academy. And I was, um, going there on Tuesday evenings. So from like six mm -hmm. to nine, that's what I was doing. It was I'm usually okay. like six to 10, almost six to 10. I'd get home at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so then you would get up, you would do your, you would do, you would work for yourself uh -huh. and then 
when did you decide that this was so much more fulfilling than the design work? You know, actually, it's a really good question because I realized that that's what I like to spend my time doing, right? So um, when I was going through the strategy um, process with my clients and asking all these really deep questions, it was kind of nagging at me, you know, it was, it was something that I was starting to notice, okay, I'm helping other people realize what they want to do, what their true vision is for their companies and for themselves. And, and I started to ask myself those questions. Um, And it's, I know it's, I'm not going to say I did strategy on myself because that would, that would be really wild if somebody could run strategy on themselves, but I did start asking myself those questions and I, I decided, you know what, I need to really take some time to pursue this. And um, it so happened that um, at that time, I was already burnt out anyway. Um, I had a lot of projects that I was, it was like a year of learning and absorbing so much. And by the end of the year, I was really tired and and pretty burnt out. And And the only thing that gave me kind of peace and solace was when I was in these classes, you know. And, you know, it was a lot of time, quite honestly, spent on the screen for me, you know, Mm -hmm. and add Zoom to that when the pandemic hit, I was over, I was done. I was fully cooked as far as the, you know, the computer comes. I was like, all right, no, well done, completely burnt. You know, um, I needed a change and, and I knew that I wanted something that I could feel in my hands. Like it didn't. I didn't want to be so perfectionistic about it. And that was what design, I love design. I will always be a designer, but that perfectionism that comes with design was driving me a little bit crazy. (laughs) So I really wanted to explore, you know, the tangible feeling of the paints in my hands and learning new brushes. And, and quite frankly, I think the number one thing was getting away from the computer. Yeah. Okay. Screen so time then, was so trying to do, so I may not have pulled up the right, I have the one of your mom, mm-hmm. um, because I think that it was that one. And then you went to the lady in the blue dress, or maybe you started yes, the lady yes. in the blue dress. Okay. So no, no, no. But I started the lady the in the blue dress, right? When you're the lady in the blue dress, which I'm going to show you on just a second. It is so perfect photographic kind of, Right. And there's a reason that you did this because you were like, this isn't the style of art I want to do, but I want to know how to do this. Yeah. So we've seen her be expressive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm going to pull up the one with your mom. Yeah. Um, and you tell whatever part of the story. And and yeah. my mom won't know why there's a red background. So <laughs> do you want to explain just a little bit about what this is? Because oh, some of these are sort of made up like the flowers. Um, yeah, you know what they were, right? Yeah. So, okay. I'm. This is a progression, right? Of when I first started this. Um, so this is something. I, again, I, like I said in the beginning, I started painting before I started drawing. So I actually started this painting here before I simultaneously while I started to um, take the drawing classes. So you can you'll be able to see the progression of how my drawing um, evolved um, as I was taking those classes. But yeah, I wanted to um, paint my mom and I did a collage with like flowers behind her. Um, you can show, I think that was the, yeah. yeah. So this was, was, see the face is starting to change there because I'm starting to be able to see better, um, see the, the change in that. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm starting to get more of her likeness, but it's still not quite her, you know? And mm-hmm. while I was getting gaining these skills, that's when I started um started capturing her essence more, you know? Um, and that's where I think that was almost the final, I'm not sure, but this is the, this is a, a close up, so I could show you what, what it was. And I wanted to do something abstract, not so perfect. I kind of wanted it all over. Um, but I really liked the way that the face was evolving and that I don't think I could have reached on my own. I really needed to go back and, and, and get into drawing. And those drawing classes were really, really essential for me. Okay. So tell my mom why it's red in the background. Um, the, uh, that's the underpainting. So if you lay some, uh, a color on top, like it can, um, what's the word? 
why am I forgetting that word? The kind, not the, not the color. It's anyway, on the color wheel, what is, you know, the opposite of that is the. The complementary color. Yes. Yes. The complementary. I don't know why I forgot that word. Um, so you want to add like a complementary color on top. And so that way it'll like vibrate and it'll pop. Um, it does something to, to your eyes um, rather than if I just paint it on white. So mm -hmm. it gives it more of a depth. Yeah. Yeah. And it also kind of helps you to know where you, um, you sometimes people will do the underpainting and you did this in the blue lady one. So let me, um, let me show the blue lady one. Yeah, sure. And I don't know if I have it in the right order or anything. I think it, maybe this is, no, that's not, that's, I probably had to. No, the that's right the order. right, I, that's the right order. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the beginning. Um, so this was when I decided to, um, re-engineer a master painting. Um, I think the way that you pronounce her name is Princessa de Broy. And it's by Ankh. <laughs> I know. It's, I would never be able to think, uh. It's, it's, it's like spelled Broglie. Broglie. <laughs> it's Broglie, Broglie uh, in English. Okay. Um, anyway, so I, and every time, a little backstory on this, the reason why I wanted to do this was because I spent a lot of time in museums when I was a kid. And my idea of what art was, was these giant elaborate, you know, princesses and um, kings and whatever of those days. Um, it was only later that I got into more, um, uh, appreciating modern art, more modern art, contemporary uh, painters. But I really, every time I go to museums, I'm still so fascinated by how they paint the skin and how they painted the, um, how it draped. And I was, I just thought, wow, how did they do that? So for me, I, I got the opportunity. They have this class here in the uh, Klein Academy as well, where you can learn how to um, paint in the classical form, the classical way, and you re-engineer a, a painting from back in the day. And so I thought this paint, I'm going to choose this painting because it has those things that I wanted to, to challenge myself on. And um, so, yeah, I decided to choose that. And if you can see it here, first you start with the, the grid. You First you start with the drawing, right? Mm -hmm. And the grid helps you. And in this case, I wanted to be as close as possible to the original painting. So the grid is okay. It's not cheating. It's not cheating people. Everyone always thinks, oh, it's cheating. But you know what? It's not. Not when you're doing a reproduction and you have to be as close as possible. Um, so did you wait? Let me ask a question. Did you have a photo of it that you also had drawn a grid over? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what you do is you get this is a 24 by 30 um, canvas. So you you basically get a color version or no, a black and white of the same the same ratio have them printed out for you. I think here it was, I don't know how much it cost, maybe 12 or $13, something like that. And I did a grid on it and I basically just transferred the drawing by eyesight, you know, and drew, drew the whole thing all over again. Um, you do an underpainting um, over that. So you start with the bra umber. I don't know if there's how many painters there are here. So if I'm go off the tangents on paints, just let me know. Um, but then you, you first, you start doing the grisaille, right? You do. And the reason that you do the grisaille is to get your values, right? So the values, if you don't have your values, right in the black and white, you're not going to really know what you're doing when you come into the color. At least this is the, the classical techniques. Um, and this was, and it was really interesting going through that as well, because then you could see where we're going darker versus where you're going lighter. The values, the value um, system is amazing to learn um, if you are drawing. Um, and then you start laying the color on top when you, when you, uh, yeah, as you go on. See, and so here I started laying the color on top. It's called glazing and it's really amazing. It's kind of, it's kind of like you're revealing mm -hmm. this painting. But again, you know, once you start going into those details, you can't look at the, at the top, for example, and say, oh, I'm painting lace. You just have to start thinking, well, I have to start thinking, I'm looking at shapes. So this is a darker shape and this is this, and this value is this. And again, see how here I started with the background. So I identified the, what was gonna be um, the darkest values. So first I did the background, then I, then I went to um, the blue couch. Then I chose the, um, the yellow because those are the things that were gonna pop. Everything else is going to um, um, reference that. You know, it's going to bounce off of that. So if I have the, I didn't start with the skin color precisely because 
if I start with the skin color first and then I add a yellow, maybe that'll make the skin color look too yellow or something like that, you know? So I, so you want to start off with, with these strong colors first and then eventually get down to the more subtle like skin tones and stuff. So one of the things with this that I had asked, cause I, uh, we were talking and I was seeing this process regularly and mm-hmm. I was like, so, cause the, I mean, I, I guess I could zoom in. Um, let me see if I could zoom into the lace. I mean, this is like amazing. And then these colors and then that, I don't know if I can, oh, bookers. I don't know how to use preview. I hate preview, but anyway, <laughs> like this was like, whoa. And I remember you saying I would get frustrated with something I was working on and I would move to the chair. I could do the chair. Like, so I think that that's also something that we need to keep in mind. So when we get frustrated, I draw rocks, you know, like I'm like, well, at least nobody can say I can't draw a rock. Right. So it's the same sort of thing. We need to have something where we're winning. And I think you started with the background one because you wanted to start with those tones, but you are like, I can make this look. Mm -hmm. And I think you come back to the chair at other times because there's some like the these gold parts that are like really, really. Let's see if I can't get back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, so Pridge asked, um, uh, well, first, uh, Amy Lynn says it's so inspiring. Uh, Van says the sheer lace, the highlight on the satin, incredible. And then Pridge says, how long did you work on this? And now that's a question because there were some other things that kind of came in while you're working on this. Let me just, uh, was it an art, what an arduous process in a good way. The layers, the steps are nothing I've ever seen. Not, she's not a painter. She says, obviously. So can you kind of fill her in like what was like how long was this when you were you taking breaks how often were you working on this because this at this point you were full time you weren't doing design right you yeah. had made that step i think i had made that step i'm trying to figure it out when was that yeah no that was last year mm-hmm. yeah 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 all the years are coming together it's crazy um yeah no at this time i started this last april and i just finished it about three weeks ago or so. And yeah, I didn't work on it every day. Um, I like took a couple summer, I took the summer off and I took December off and there was things in between that I was working on as well. Um, this was, I, I think I, I could have finished it in a couple of months now. Now looking back, I could, I could say that at the time, I think if I worked on it every day, it would have gone faster. It probably would have been like three, three months or four months if I did it every day. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it was uh, time consuming and ha- I needed to have a lot of patience, but when I, when it was a little too much, I just put it on the side. You so know? you were, it wasn't like you were just doing this one thing all the time. So now if you'll see, there was a big issue that came when you started adding color, you could do the skin tones and this is that brain stuff again. I think we're like, that's not what skin looks like, but mm-hmm. you had to look at it. I mean, you got the gold down and she was so awesome as a black and white lady. She was right? great as black and white. <laughs> right. But that was, this is that pr- picture. I love that there was this process and it is that mind work. To me, this was just so fascinating to see the inside. Do you want to explain this to them? Yeah. So this is when I started um, looking at the color Um, and I had to, you know, I was trying to match as close as possible what I was looking at. Um, And yeah, I just had to put patches on top and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to ruin this whole painting. But I just had to keep going with it, you know? So that was, that was testing the skin, skin uh, uh, colors directly on the painting. Um, And that was an arduous process. (laughs) And then this is, uh, I think this is the last one. Yeah. This is the last one. Yeah. That's yeah. One. Yeah. Like the ribbons, like, cause these weren't there here in this one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh no, they yeah, were they there. Weren't. Where, which ones are you talking about? These ribbons. Oh, oh, oh yes, 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 yes. But, but I, I don't, I mean so much more on this one. Yeah. Because, um, after, once you look at the whole, once you've done the whole thing, then you go back and go, Oh, some of my highlights are off, you know, some need to pop more and some don't. Um, so I needed to bring up, especially my highlights. Cause when, the, when you paint, the paint dry is actually darker than what you think it is. So a lot of my underpainting was darker than I expected it to be. Um, 
And so naturally my drawing on top of it was also darker. Um, so I had to go back and, and really make some things pop out. And so that was the last thing I did was go back and look at the highlights and yeah, do the final sweep on everything. So, and I finally got the skin to where I wanted it. And the skin was, was really, really challenging. I have to say, I had to keep going over and over and over. And the key when you're doing something like this is not to, to put globs of paint because you're trying to make it as smooth as possible. Um, so yeah, it eventually worked out. So I, I love this. I love that you, for many years, you were finding time to work this into your busy schedule. Um, and um, I do, I want to show the new stuff because we're almost out of time. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and it's such a progression. I love that the styles have changed. So you actually, in the blue lady painting, the blue dress lady, you hired a, a mentor, right? So uh, you, instead of just taking classes, you took it to the next level. Could you tell them about why you did that? And then, because that's really where some of this new stuff kind of started. Yeah. Um, so aside from getting the technique down, I really wanted to um, get out what was inside, you know, and I needed somebody to look at my work, somebody who was an artist to look at my work and really kind of challenge me and push me. Um, there were some things that kept coming up in my work, the work that I was doing, and that was like flowers and things like that. And since I was making this change, like I really needed somebody to mentor me through it. So I hired this artist mentor who happened to put on Instagram. Instagram is a great tool when you're trying to find people um, that said she was offering, she did mentoring and I liked her, her, the art that she was doing. So I rang her up and I said, Hey, I, I would love for you to take a look at what I'm doing. And, and she said, okay, she, I showed her everything that I was doing up to date. And, and then she asked me questions like a strategist would, like what, what is coming up for you with the flowers? Why do you think, you know, this is what you're gravitating towards. And um, she challenged me to do a photo shoot with flowers. She said, you know, why don't you try uh, doing some kind of um, photo shoot with the flowers where you're with the flowers and see what comes up. And, and let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to charcoals before you start moving into color again. Why don't you do that? And that really brought up a bunch of stuff for me. I mean, it was a big time of change for me. You know, I was, I was making this big um, change in my career. So things were coming up around uh, life and death and rebirth and transformation. And it started to show in all the, the drawings that I was, that I was uh, creating. And I didn't, honestly, I didn't even think I could do this out of my own imagination, you know? Mm -hmm. So these are, this is the first one, one of the first ones that I did and they started to um, dragonflies kept coming up. Yes, right? that, dragonflies. So like these, these uh, symbols kept coming up and I thought, you know, I'm just going to throw in a dragonfly. I don't know why I'm just, it's just going to go in there. And then other things started popping up like a hummingbird again, the dragonflies and then a bee. And I, I started to, um, to realize like, oh, these are all things like that are kind of dealing with my uncomfortableness right now, you know, how I'm feeling and about, I don't know, I could just imagine myself being with it, just doing the photo shoot with the flowers on top of you, you are uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever done that, but I got pollen all over my face and like didn't come out for like two days, you know, while trying to scrub that stuff stained, but like just the uncomfortable, um, uncomfortableness of having all those things on top of you, which uh, it's almost exactly what I was feeling emotionally, you know, and then other things started coming up like um, fish and being underwater. And this, this idea of rebirth and, and transformation was coming out and I went with it, you know, and she, she really pushed me because a lot of times I started to get like patterny and my stuff. And she said, you know what, break away from the pattern. I want you to get more, a little bit more dirty with this. And it was great having her because I could, I had somebody to um, keep me honest, you know, and somebody that, that could keep me um, uh, working almost like a deadline. Right. So I am, I'm, I'm a designer. I had so many years of working with clients and I really needed somebody to uh, um, hold me accountable and keep me honest. And that's what, that's what she's been doing. And it's been really great. So these ideas were meant to be like a study of what 
a larger painting would look like. But when she saw them, she loved them so much. And she was like, you could have a show just with these, you know? And uh, so now I'm considering having a show just with these. Um, I'm still, now I'm still transitioning into what these would look like as if, if they became giant paintings. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm doing a bunch of studies and with color based around these. And these, are, this is where you're painting with charcoal, right? Yeah, are- yeah which I had never heard. So, uh, but it was fantastic. So I love, one thing I love is that when we are in community with other people, when they learn something, if they're willing to share, then I can learn. I can learn through what you're learning. And I can also learn through the frustration because I would have never thought that you would have ever said in your whole life that you couldn't draw, right? (laughs) Paul, are you hearing me, buddy? Um, uh, Because I have said this. I know Paul has said this. You have said this. Joanna, you have said this. And I am like, oh. And then it's also that imagination. These fish weren't really in the photo. So you're having to take, you're like, you see the shape and you're like, it kind of looks like a fish. I'm going to kind of draw it in. And then you go and look at the real fish, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I was, I was, uh. I didn't know how to draw them. So I thought I was looking at images on, uh, you know, online on Google. And then I started putting them in there and plugging them in. And that's what evolved from that. But even just technically that, that I didn't know that you could paint charcoal with a paintbrush, right? Like, yeah, no, I didn't either. I, 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 didn't I, either. I just love, I, I, I just, there's so much of this, Joanna, that is just super inspiring to me. In the last 10 years, what has been the biggest um, area of change in your life and business or life or business? Oh, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, There was a couple of things that I did, you know, I think both, all all of them require risk, you know, Um, I left a corporate job, a very good corporate job to start my own business. That was a big leap. And I really didn't have any, uh, you know, I I didn't know if it was going to succeed or not. I, there was no, uh, I couldn't see, you know, the crystal, the crystal ball, you know, Um, that was one. And then the other was getting married to a creative person, which has totally changed my life. Um, because we really, that, that just kind of flourished everything. I mean, that, that, um, helped my business and that helped me dream and make, you know, this, this, uh, painting possibility possible, you know, um, that, that all those things kind of have been really huge in my life, like taking those risks, um, jumping when I thought maybe there's no safety net there. But you know what? We only live once and I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. So I think doing those things and, and just believing that it was going to work out has been huge in my life. Well, yeah. and going all in. So you've, you, you've gotten a studio now. You are all in. You have the studio space. You've even cleaned up the bathroom in the studio space, right? Like you've done the renovations. But it's not like just this, but it started you doing just little bits in, in your, in your home studio, right? Your home office space for maybe paintings, or you would do them at the school where you would go and take classes. And then it's starting like, nope, I need to invest. So you were one investing in yourself. You were embracing risk, right? And it was also just the encouragement of your, your you know, husband that he was willing to and supported and encouraged you to continue to push. I think that again, that's community, but it's also that really, um, that integral part of being on the same page of, he might not have known exactly where it was going to go, but Mm -hmm. he trusts you. He, and, and that he trusts you, you trust you then as well. Yeah, there's no, absolutely. That encouragement and that encouragement from all the people around me, including yourself, Diane, and, and all our community has been really, really integral. Um, and even the future community, you know, was amazing because even though I'm not on the same path that I was when I joined um, that community a while ago, it really helped to guide me to where I am right now. 
And I don't know where I will be in a year from now. I don't know. But I know that that I needed to take a chance on myself and, and I needed to believe. And those are the times that I've been the happiest. And so I needed to do that. I mean, it doesn't come without fear, though. So I am fearful, but I'm still <laughs> going to do it. So but it's not letting that fear uh, drive you. It's yeah, just no, in no. the trunk, right? It's yeah. something you're, you bring it along, yeah. but it's not, doesn't have the, the map and control. Yeah, It's not going to derail me. It's not going to make me stop. I I'm acknowledged that it's there. Um, I, and I, you know, a lot of the, the drawings that you just saw the, the charcoal paintings acknowledge that fear and acknowledge the, the frustration that I was going through and it was, it's okay. I'm still going to do it though. So yeah. You know, it's fine. Well, the other thing I love is that you didn't really know why you were going to put a dragonfly in. You didn't look up a whole bunch of symbolism like you would maybe yeah. as a designer. You know, mm-hmm. we would do all the research and get all this stuff that mm-hmm. that you just embraced what was happening and yes. you let it happen. And I think that um, like maybe with the flowers, um, I think I remember you saying, you know, you were putting these flowers and there was always this um there was something about the flowers to the picture of your mom that was, maybe it was, it wasn't resolved completely. Maybe I I can't remember exactly. Maybe it was that you felt like the flowers weren't tight enough or something. Yeah, they weren't. I don't, I think it was that, that everything seemed like kind of surface level up until Mm -hmm. now. And so now I quite literally am showing that I'm like under the, you know, below the surface. And so that's what I really want to go to, you know, and I think as, to become the artist that I want to be, I really want to have, I have to get into the areas that I don't really always want to navigate through. (laughs) Um, But I think it's really important. And for me, it's been important to go through all these um, uh, challenges and even do things that I don't necessarily want to do forever, just to know that I can do them. You know, Uh, that's not everyone's uh, path, but I know that that's for what I needed to do. One, it's also like the lady, the blue dress lady, you don't want, that's not the style you want to work in, Mm -hmm. but you wanted to get through that. And I think it's the, it wasn't just a fluke that you did it. You could do this again. And you have, you have a way that you went through and you made that. So I, I love that. I have, I, we barely got my questions, but that's okay. We're friends. So we we can always do this again, but um, there's always going to be challenging spots in the, our business and in the life of our businesses in, in a project. And I love how, when you were in the blue dress lady, I know she has a name. I really can't remember it. And all right. um, Yeah. So, but that you would just, you would change focus for a while. And in a way you were doing that when you were in your business and you changed focus by taking painting classes or taking drawing classes, mm-hmm. but then you, there was always mentorship or you were always learning. You were open to learning from something. So things that I'm taking away, hopefully everybody else is, but you were willing to ask, um, willing to look at masters and then ask for help. But then you were also willing to take risks. You were willing to go all in, go deep in. We're going with charcoal. We're going, let's see where it goes. I'm going to get a studio space and we're going to, I'm going to clean out the bathroom at the studio space. Like this is not just a surface level kind of thing. And for, as a strategist, you would go so deep right? To understand everything about a company and then you deliver. And there is something really oh, that that project's over or they are, it's delivered and they're using it. And, and some of this is like, you went back, you kept going back to the blue lady. You took breaks from the blue lady. And I, I guess I could see this as a different in maybe how you would work on a project for a client. Like sure. you would, continue to go back. Like I'm not there yet. I need to take a step back and I need to do something else. So I would, it wasn't like you weren't drawing at all you or painting at all. You just weren't working on her. So it was, mm-hmm. it was allowing that time for that percolation. I think percolation. Yeah. It was giving, uh, giving me the freedom to say, okay, I have to put this away right now. Um, and I learned that from a lot of my painting instructors, you know, they said they, one of my painting instructors said, you start three paintings at once, you know, it's that way it, when one is a little bit too much, you move on to the other while the paint is literally drying. 
Um, but yeah, that is, it was important for me to keep, keep going and learning has always been a part of my, the way that I am, I'm always learning. And I think, especially once you've done something for so long, like be a designer for 20 years, you really expect to, to go into something being an expert as well, which is really kind of, it's awful Terrible. to do that to yourself. Oh. <laughs> it's really awful. Yes. Um, it, it's like, what are we thinking, you know? And, uh, I think it's giving yourself grace and patience, you know, um, that you can do it and practice. I really think if you have the inclination to draw, if you have the inclination to be an artist or to do anything, if you practice, this is, that's the biggest thing that I've learned in these past couple of years. If you just keep practicing and get past the ugly part, you know, because there's always an ugly part. There's always an ugly hill where you think you're going to be stuck in the whole time. But if you just get past that, you're going to be just fine, you know? So patience and practice are the biggest, biggest life lessons that I've had that if I had started a long time ago and given myself, you know, patience and practice, I don't know what I could be doing now, you know, but Hey, whatever, maybe this was the moment for me, you know, (laughs) this was the moment that I could absorb it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, then what, would you say to somebody else, this isn't one of our questions, but I'm, this will be our last question after it. I'll, we'll ask you what's next, but what, it, and Debbie had a great thing. She said, we, sh- she said that we should do a one year later episode. So next March, yeah. do a one year later, see where you are and what you're doing. So okay. Maybe, yeah, that'd be great. I know that'd be cool. Okay. So what would you tell somebody like Pridge? She was saying, um, you know, we always have to explain the symbolism and justify. And she's tired of that. And I know she's mm-hmm. done reso graphs. That's how I learned about it was from Pridge. And there's, you know, all of us are kind of doing things. So what would you tell somebody who it, would like to do more of this, but is maybe a f- scared to take that, that step like what what would be a first step is it just taking some classes is it what what would you tell them I mean mean, with their job you know (laughs) I would I would say just take a step Mm. because one step will lead to the next step which will lead to the next step and before you know it you will have amassed whatever it is that you want to learn you will have learned you know and you'll will have amassed a body of work so start little, start every day, um, take a class. If you can take a class, I'm sure there are some that are being offered in your area. I didn't know until I looked, I thought that it would probably, it should just show up in my door, <laughs> you know? And then I started looking and I thought, oh, wow, I didn't know that there was a place here and really, um, give yourself the opportunity. I don't know about you, you all, but I'm a very, very shy person it may not seem that way to a lot of my friends. Um, but I'm a very shy person. So going into these classes, I had the mentality that I was going to go back into art school 20 years ago, you know, and that was a very different time. (laughs) And um, I was really scared, but I, you know, I said to myself, I can't be scared. I just have to do it. And it's okay. You know, it's fine. Like, it's not, you're not in competition with anyone, you know, there's just do it. Just do it. Take that step before you'll know it. You'll be taking many steps. You'll be doing a lot. Okay. Um, Joanna, just thank you. Thank you for being courageous. Thank you for doing things that are hard that maybe don't make sense um, to the rest of your family or, you know, like it's so nice to have somebody in front of me that's doing something and being bold and being brave. um, And just also like uh, willing to share some of those I didn't have it right. And I'm still working on this or I'm trying this. So, um, it, and Anna said she read a book. Um, it was called, uh, learn creative, Le- creative habit, learn, you know, creative habit, learn use life. There's a link, but it was just to host and panelists. So Anna, you'll have to pop that into everything. She said she read this book years ago and it's now only sinking in that I'm taking steps towards a creative habit. I do think, oh, The Creative Habit by Twyla Tharp. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I read that. That's a good one. One summer. There's, a, there's so, you know, there's a lot of great books. Um, oh my gosh, that book, uh, How to Be an Artist, I mm-hmm. think it is, by um, Jerry Saltz. That's a really great book. Um, and that's for anyone who's trying to do whatever it is that they're trying to do, you know? Um, it's really, really good. That one, um, 
the one by Julia Cameron. Yeah, the, the artist. Uh, right? mm-hmm. It's really great. And then constantly having um, listening to podcasts like Diane's podcast that that encourages you. That's that's what I do when I paint. I listen to podcasts. You know, our dear friend Chris is a uh, uh, podcast as well. Build curiosity. It's it's been great. You know, every if just keep feeding yourself creativity, and that you will output creativity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, Joanna. Thank you so much for being on and thanks you for being my friend and just inspiring so many people. And we will not be on next week because I will be in Georgia at Creative South. And I can't wait to see so many of you in person and hug you unless you have a thing on your neck that says, I'm not going to hug anybody. Um, (laughs) Anyway, uh, there's like three different kinds of lanyards, like stay six feet away, which I think is great. You know, like a visual cue of for people, it's comfort zone. I think that's great. Um, <laughs> that's nice. But I um, am very excited that I'll be there and then we'll come back and we have another painter uh, and a printmaker. And then um, we're just kind of ending the month in some illustration and uh, some other things that are artsy as well. So thank you, Joanna, for being here. I want to make sure that everybody knows. And I did uh, plop this into the chat and I will have to do it again. And I don't know where my Wacom pin is. I guess I can draw because I got a Wacom pin, right, Taylor? I'm just kidding. Um, the It's Joanna, J-O-A-N-N-A-P-A-O-L-A-A-R-T on Instagram. That's how you can follow her. Or you can yeah. go the same, J-O-A-N-N-A-P-A-O-L-A-Art.com. It's because yeah. I suck at um, saying her uh, Paula. Mm, Paula. <laughs> Paula. Mm. Anyway, I should say it like Paula because that's what uh, she told me to say. So that's, that's what it is. Okay. Thank you, Diane. And thank you for your, your courageousness as well. You are, you are an inspiration to so many. And I thank you. Um, I'm honored to be on your podcast today. Thank you well, so much. Thank you. And we'll see you guys. Oh, and, and Joanna, if you'll do it in a year, we'll, we'll book it and we'll do a year. From yeah, now. let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Bye y'all.